Today, I'm going to talk about Orca. This is joint work with my colleagues at Friendly AI and SNU. In recent years, big transformer-based generative models have received much attention thanks to their modeling power. This example here shows OpenAI GPT-3 summarizing a paragraph about a neutron star, which is amazing. Many companies have been attracted by the amazing capabilities of generative models, developing their own huge models. All of these models are based on transformers. These models are very powerful, but they come at a high cost. First of all, model training can be very challenging and costly, but solving the models has even harder challenges. If we assume that handling in one GPT-3, 175 billion model instance requires 16 A100 GPUs in Azure, the cost for one year is about half a million dollars. If we are solving 400 instances, the cost becomes burdensome, reaching over $119 million per year. In this work, we focus on how to scale the throughput of serving transformer-based generative models. Throughout the talk, we'll use generative language models as the driving example. But our work is applicable to any transformer-based generative models. To start, let me first explain how the inference in generative language models works. For simplicity, let's assume we have a decoder learning model with three transformer layers, simply denoted here as layers. We'll also exclude the embedding layer and language model head for simplicity in the figure. Now, we'll assume that the user gives some input, I think this, to the model. The inference process is iterative. The first iteration processes, I think this. The model generates each as an output. The first output token is fed as the input token to the next iteration. In iteration two, we process the is token, and we have the output token grade. This process repeats. In the third iteration, the previously generated token grade is used as the input token. In iteration three, the special token end of sentence is generated, thus the process stops. The generation process stops when it hits the special token or reaches the maximum token length. Let's zoom into the transformer layer. The important operation of the transformer is attention. This operation is tricky to handle. The figure shows how an attention score between tree and key is computed for the given input. In this case, attention scores of the three tokens, I think this, for the first iteration. For simplicity, we do not show the value part of the attention operation here. In the second iteration, the query is is, the keys I think this is. We use cache attention keys and values for the tokens I think this. In the last iteration, the query is great and the keys I think this is great. In summary, the inference of generative language models has the following characteristics. It consists of multiple iterations. Each iteration generates one token at a time. The iterations can be split into two phases. At the initial shown phase, we process all input tokens at once. That's the first iteration. In the increment phase, that is from the second iteration all the way to the last iteration, the engine processes a single token generated from the previous iteration while using attention keys and values of all previous tokens. We save attention keys and values for the following iteration to avoid recomputation. Serving all the models consists of two components, the inference server and the inference execution engine. Let me explain how they interact with an example. Suppose we are processing two sentence completion requests, x1 and x2 from clients. Let's assume that the maximum batch size is three. The inference server chooses two requests as a batch and force it to the engine. The engine processes the request and it returns outputs for X1 and X2. The inference server returns the responses back to the client. 
The current system looks perfectly fine, but it has big limitations. I will now talk about two main problems we identified with the current system and our solutions to address them. The first problem is that the inference server interacts with the execution engine at the request level. Let me explain what I mean by that. In the current system, once the execution engine receives the batch of the requests, it processes them until they are done. Now, suppose the engine finishes request X2, but it cannot return the response of X2 back to the inference server. The engine can only return the response after it finishes the processing the entire batch. Therefore, the latency of X2 increases unnecessarily. Here is another inefficiency. In this example, suppose the inference server sent X1 and X2 to the engine and it started to process X1 and X2. Now, right after sending X1 and X2, a new request X3 comes in. The execution engine cannot process X3 together since the batch started already. Thus, X3 should wait until the engine is done with processing the batch. The latency of X3 increases even though the engine has the capacity of processing three requests at the same time. The root cause of the problem is that the inference server and the execution engine interact with each other only at the start and end of processing a batch of requests. Our solution to this problem is iteration level scheduling. We ask the engine to execute in a fine-grained manner. In iteration level scheduling, the scheduler selects requests for one iteration and sends the batch to the engine to execute one iteration of generating a token per request and return its result. Let's look at an example. We have requests X1 and X2. Again, the maximum batch size is three. The scheduler selects X1 and X2 and batches them. It then sends the batch to the engine and the engine executes it. Now, we have a new request X3. The execution engine generates tokens for X1 and X2. Now, after that, X1 and X2 return to the request pool. They both have their first output token generated. Next, the scheduler chooses X1, X2, and X3. It sends the batch to the execution engine. Thus, to start processing, X3 does not need to wait for X1 and X2 to end. Now, suppose we have new requests X4 and X5. In iteration two, suppose the engine happens to generate the end of sentence for X2. When the iteration execution for this batch returns, the scheduler can send the response for X2 to the client right away. Now, we have four requests in the request pool. This time, the scheduler selects X1, X3, and X4. The engine processes them. With this technique, we can handle only finished or late live requests much more efficiently. Next, I'll delve into the second challenge we identified and how we addressed it. When we try to use iteration level scheduling for transform based generative models, one major challenge we face is batching. The current system cannot batch X1, X3, and X4 in this figure. To batch requests in the current system, the requests should be in the same phase and have the same length. Suppose we have these three requests in the batch. In this case, the phase of X3 is different from those of X1 and X2. Thus, X3 has length 3, but X1 and X2 have length 1 as input. This means that X3 is a 3 by H tensor, where H is the hidden size of a mother, but X1 and X2 are 1 by H tensors. We cannot coalesce tensors of different shapes. Here is another problem in batching when requests have different lengths. In this example, the three requests are processing tokens at different indexes from each other. To batch the execution of requests, 
Each request should have identical operations. That is, they should consume identically shaped input tensors. This is not the case for the attention op. Thus, we cannot batch the attention op. Our solution to this problem is to apply batching selectively. First, we coalesce the tensors into sum of Li by H tensor for batching. Li is the input length for request I. In the example, even though X1 and X2 have shapes different from X3s, we can put the three tensors together into a four by H tensor. Then the tensor is put into the layer norm followed by linear in the layer. For these ops, we don't need to distinguish the elements of different requests. But to handle attention, which we have to distinguish requests, we split the batched input tensor, process each request individually, and merge the output tensors. With this technique, we can handle the attention ops of the three requests in the batch as shown in the figure, even though they are in different phases and they process tokens in different token indices. We designed and implemented OCA, a serving system for transform-based generative models that employs iteration-level scheduling and select batching. OCA is a distributed serving system that can handle Bing models across GPUs and across machines. OCA consists of a scheduler, the request pool, and execution engine. Let's zoom into OCA's execution engine. In the execution engine, we can horizontally or vertically partition the model and distribute the parts across GPUs. Suppose we have partitioned the model into six parts. Here, each worker has two GPUs for illustration. Each GPU in the worker has a part of the same transformer layer. There are three workers. The workers are connected through the control plane for exchanging commands and the data plane for exchanging tensors. Orca's distributed execution combines model parallelism and pipeline parallelism. Worker one executes layer in model parallel after executing in one worker one, it sends the output tensors to worker two and so on. Oracle's scheduler currently runs a simple first-come, first-served algorithm. Oracle also uses an efficient pipelining scheme across multiple workers to fully utilize GPUs. Due to time constraints, please report to the paper for more details. Now, let's take a look at how well Oracle performs. We implemented Oracle in C++ from scratch. We evaluated GPT-3 models ranging from 13 billion to 341 billion parameters. For evaluation, we used Azure VMs. Each VM has eight NVIDIA A100 GPUs. For comparison, as our baseline, we used Faster Transformer as the execution engine and the custom scheduler that mimics the batching schedule of Triton. We synthesized the trace of client requests for workloads and measured latency and throughput. Each request takes a different duration of time for processing since it generates a different number of tokens. We can say that the processing time is proportional to the output length. Thus, we report latency normalized by output length. Here is the median of the normalized latency in millisecond per token for 175 billion and 341 billion models. As you can see, Orca significantly outperforms the baseline. For the given target median latency, Orca can serve GP3 175 billion with 36.9 times higher throughput than the baseline. As the model size becomes larger, we see even larger gains. So if we need to host 400 GPT-3, 175 billion instances for the same target median latency and same throughput, OCA costs only $5.7 million per year compared to the baseline. As you can see, that's a huge saving. We also ran experiments to see what would happen when the requests are 
homogeneous. Oka still outperforms the baseline significantly. In summary, large-scale transformer-based generative models are important for tools to serve efficiently. In this work, we propose Oka, the first serving system for such models that employs iteration-level scheduling and select batching to improve performance. OCA improves request throughput of GPT-3, 175 billion by up to 36.9 times at the same level of latency. OCA is currently deployed as friendly as cloud service and our clients are using OCA in production. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions.